So there's a few different things I want to tackle in this video. I want to uh, test the power supply to 7805 to make sure I have regulation and power every place I expect it to be. This gets back to the first rule of troubleshooting. Always check the power rails. This board's never been powered up. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up. I've got the meter here set to volts. And I'm just going to clip on here to this output filter capacitor that filters the uh, the 5 volts coming out of the regulator. And it would help if I got the polarity correct. Negatives over here. Positives over here. I have my bench supply set up to, to provide uh, 8 volts DC, which should appear on this capacitor right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip these clip leads, clip leads onto that capacitor. And what I'm going to do here is just turn the power supply on for a second and off and see that I get 5 volts on the meter here. So let's go ahead and toggle the power supply. And we've got 5.01 volts. So that's a good sign. It says the regulator here is actually regulating. Uh, it's very close to 5 volts, which is excellent. So really the next thing to do, let me turn the power supply back off, is to walk through each socket and make sure I have 5 volts in ground at each socket. And the way to do this is to actually test both pins at the socket really like so. If I left the ground connected over here and tested just the plus 5, there's a chance that one of the ground pins on a device wouldn't be hooked up and that would cause issues. So really, you know, the best bet is to test at each socket. Typically on TTL devices, uh, you've got pin 1 in this corner down here. The furthest right pin here is ground and typically the furthest left pin on the top is, is plus. That's not always true, but as a general rule, it is true the vast majority of the time. So let's go ahead and look at each socket and make sure we find 5 volts. Like I said, this is verifying I have both ground and power coming all the way through to the socket. That looked kind of weird that it took so long to come up just wasn't making good contact in the socket. 5 volts there, 5 volts there, five volts there. And for the 28212s, I should have 5 volts as well. So this is a good sign. I've got regulation. I've got 5 volts out on every one of the sockets. I'm now going to uh, switch the mode over to AC and I'm going to look to see if I can measure any ripple on the power supply at this point. There shouldn't be any. So that's measuring, you know, 15 millivolts ripple, which is perfectly acceptable at this point. It's not swinging around wildly. Uh, you can get these older uh, three pin voltage regulators to actually oscillate if you know if the capacitors around them weren't correct, etc. Now there's no load on the circuit at this point. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stuff the TTL parts. I've got almost everything I need here. I could only find 18212. Boy, that is really dirty. I do believe that's an 8212. So let's go ahead and stuff the parts. We've got a little diagram here of what goes where. I've got a 74 LS04. Looks to go down in this corner down here. I've got a 74 LS100 down here. Most of these are, are new parts. A few of them are uh, very vintage. I may have to manually bend those leads in now. Oh, I got it. I've got a 7486, which is up here. Having all these pins soldered in place makes this a little tricky to work around them. I've got a 7442 down here, which is, we need to blank select 
or bank select for various things is 7486. Why have I got two? That's an 86. Was this an 85? Let me pull it out and take a look. better glasses. I trusted the park bins. No, nope, that's an 86. These are both 86s, so I'm going to have to go dig for a 7485. I've got another 7400, which is up here high. Actually, those leads are really nasty, so I need to that really is an 86. I need to find a 7485 and a clean 7400. So I'm going to stroll on over to my parts bin. Sorry for doing this off camera. So the 7442 I put in here has a date code of 1980 on it, so it's pretty vintage. The parts really don't have date codes on them. I'm not going to put in the 8212 for now. Uh, James Co. has these, they're pulls, and I'm going to order up some pulls, I think. But that gets that much TTL, and I'm still missing somebody. I forgot to grab a 7400 replacement. clean pins. See power supplies off and I'm going to power back up at this point just in case I've got a bad device in there. DC volts. Actually, we can do DC plus AC here. And if you noticed, I got those on backwards. I don't know why I keep doing that. That's the regulated output side. And this is the regulated output side. Negative to negative, negative to negative. Go ahead and bring up power supply. 5.000 volts. It's spot on. Let's take the mode straight to AC. Let's just see if we're measuring any ripples. So the ripples come up a little bit to 20 millivolts or so. So again, it's not, at least based on, on the, the meter here. Uh, oscillating wildly which is a good thing so I'm happy with that and the next piece to move on to here if I can get leads out of the way is wire wrapping the various connections we need get things to work. Now I've got a 
took a scan of the board, uh, converted it to black and white, inverted it, did a bunch of cleanup to kind of get me a view of the logic part of the board here. And it's going to be hard to see, but on here I have various colored lines that show what pin gets wire wrapped to what pin. Uh, there's a mistake on the board. Pin 99 is actually here and not one pin in like it shows. We'll deal with that. So the first thing I need to do is find the wire wrap wire. And I need to ground MD on this board or on that pin. So I'm going to go ahead and strip off a little bit. And the ground, all I'm going to do is tack the lead into the solder over here on a ground connection to this little capacitor. And we'll basically just loop that around to MD. Strip off the wire. Ooh, that was tight to stiff, or, or very stiff to a uh, strip. And we'll come over here to MD, which is that second pin in. And we'll just wrap that on there. Here's the beauty of using wire wrap and pins to do this, is I can reconfigure it if I make a mistake. I can clean that up. So that's really the only piece of black wire I need. I'd like to kind of follow the color coding here if I can. I don't want to use red. This is orange on here. here but I'm going to use yellow the clear pins need to go to the power on reset or power on clear and that is through well. There's a little slot that the wrap wire slides into on the side of the hole in the wire wrap tool. It actually goes over the pin. So we're going to bring power on reset to there. make the amount to be wrapped a little bit short because I've got to get two wraps on that pin so I can daisy chain this up to the next pin let's go right there and then we're going to take that pin done this for a long time so I'm a little out of practice and we're gonna do a second wrap onto that same pin and we're gonna bring that up here to the pin up here you can see that wire wrapping you know a large amount of logic on a large board or multiple boards can be tedious and it is uh, this is really how prototyping was done back in the day and that comes to and clear or power run clear there so we've got those wires in place There's some blue We've got two blue leads and two purple leads. I'm 
So we're going to come off of the device select 2 up here. Use this pin here. With that pin right there. And that's going to loop up to the output strobe, which is one of these pins up here. select two on the device down here. And that's going to come to the bank there of input strobes. Input strobe. Purple. Do I have anything that looks purplish down here? Or will I substitute another color? I reserve red and black for power. So I don't want to use red or black except where I use the black for that one ground. We'll use brown here. So we've got device select one there. Almost all this wrap wire, and I've got a bunch of it, uh, was picked up surplus for about $20 ages ago. And that's going to, so we've got the least significant select bit here in the next bit up. So I'm going to take this to here. So if this was strapped to be uh, at port 0 through 7, the input port here would be on port 1. And this would put the output port on port 0. So we're going to pick up that pin right there. is pulled up on this nail. Let me get the other brown wire in here. And device select one is this pin here. And that's going to come over to the least significant bit right there. So that 7442 is a 4-bit 1 to 10 decoder uh, often used to drive things like Nixie tubes. In this case it's just being used as a you know as a 4-bit BCD you know, decoder which is fine for this application. So that's going to come to what's called the least significant bit of the decoder. So port 0 
this pin will go low when port 0 is being uh, written or read, port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4, port 5, port 6, and port 7 up here on the end, which is labeled MSB if you can see it here. Now I've got a couple pull-ups to put in, and that's both strobe pins get pulled up? Yes. In this case, I will use red for those. So there's a 1K ohm pull-up resistor here on the board. And that pull-up resistor is across these two pins right here. And it's already connected to MD to pull the, the MD pin on this one high. The MD pin on the bottom one here uh, goes to ground. And then the strobe inputs on both devices need to be uh, pulled high, just pulled up. They could be tied directly to VCC, but it's a little kinder to just put them through a, a pull-up resistor. And we're just going to share the one pull-up resistor using red wire because it's essentially 5 volts. It's not a power rail, but it's pulled up to 5 volts. And there's four open spots here to pick up pull-ups. And I'm going to use the second position up and leave the first position, the bottom one, for the IC above it. So that's pulled up. We take the strobe, which is that pin right there, and we pull it up as well. Pull up just simply refers to pulling a pin up to a logic 1 to 5 volts, and typically use pull up resistors to do that. Uh, helps limit the current consumption. And we got a lot of logic devices, especially old school stuff like this, current consumption becomes big concern so that's that one strobe and that's going to come around to there I think that's everybody. So, uh, device select one to output strobe, device select one to input strobe, clear to clear to pin 99, which is power on clear, uh, strobe is pulled up. Strobe is pulled up. Oh. Strobe is pulled up. MD is pulled low. And device select one not to there. Device select not to there. The interrupt pins, there's a couple of interrupt outputs here. We're not going to do anything with those. We're just going to leave them alone. So really, assuming I've interpreted the little manual right and the couple of schematics, this should give me a latched, latched output port on these pins. It's data 0 to data 7 and an input port, data 0 to 7, down here. So really... That's, you know, that's the beginning of doing something. We could then drop a UART up in here and a baud rate generator and turn this into a serial I.O. card. But for now, I just want to see if the card will work this far. So, uh, really, that's the three things I wanted to hit in this video. And that was testing the power rails, inserting the ICs, and a little bit of wire wrapping we just did. So with that, I will... Uh, I guess call this video done, and I'll see you in the next video.